Hey everybody, so today we're having a look at the middle section in Shadow of the Vampire, um, sort of the section where Orlok's humanity comes to the fore, um, where he sits down and has a drink with the, the his fellow sort of filmmakers, and we look at how the othering of Dracula or Orlok in other movies and other texts is not carried through so much in this one, very much more the postmodern sort of take on a voice that isn't heard. So hopefully you've watched it already, um, and because I'm going to be just talking over the top of it as it goes. Let's give us some vampire questions. When uh, did you become a vampire? I can't recall. Alright, so already we've got this illusion back to the Gothic. We've got Orlok as the other standing apart from his, um, or from the other two. He's above everybody. We've got that really grotesque look on his face, and obviously the crossed hands and so there's that hearkening back to the the monstrous and to monstrosity itself in him at this point in the clip where were you born where were you born i can't remember oh it's not funny anymore Mom, can't dracula would say he couldn't remember i read that book oh no give it to me well, now this is a golden opportunity speaking as a vampire okay so here we go he's sitting down and he's now no longer that i mean he is other obviously he looks very different to these guys but there's something companionable about this scene now the three of them sitting together having a drink traditionally that is something that you do with people that you're getting to know or that you do know and so the barriers are being broken down a little bit they're able to question him and you guys should have the dialogue sheets there so you'll be able to tell me a little bit about the quotes when I get back and how they lead to um, an understanding of Orlok's humanity. What do you make of the book's technical merits? It made me sad. Why sad? Because Dracula had no servants. I think you missed the point of the book, uh, Orlok. <laughs> Dracula. <laughs> hasn't had servants in 400 years and then a man comes to his ancestral home and he was... All right, so remember that before when we were studying Dracula we were looking at the missing voice. So this film, this postmodern film, gives Dracula a voice or gives Count Orlok a voice. He hasn't had a friend for 400 years. This is Orlok pointing to the very human feeling of loneliness, which we don't get in any of the other texts he must convince him that he that he is like the man he has to feed him when he himself hasn't eaten food in sin okay so we've got when he himself is like the man so there's this pretending going on here it's this kind of reversal of roles where we saw before the vampire as being something that sucked the life out of people which you know they still are but we've got now the idea that man is the thing that sucks the life out of people that um dracula in the book has had to you know go back to what it is to being human and that thought has made him even more lonely than he ever was because he can no longer gain that mortality or that humanity again Injuries. can he even remember how to buy bread how to select cheese and wine and then he remembers the rest of it okay so he remembers the rest of it having to select cheese having to select wine having to pretend that he's human again brings him back to that humanity that he used to have so here we're talking about dialogue um and the conversation that's going on between the men as allowing us an insight into a vampire that we haven't had before how to prepare a meal how to make a bed he remembers his past glory his armies, his retainers, and what he is reduced to. The loneliest part of the book comes when the man accidentally sees Dracula setting his table. So the loneliest part of the book comes when the man accidentally sees Dracula setting his table. So we're looking at the table almost as a symbol of what the vampire has lost. 
as being something that he he he's lost his, his civilization he's lost his people his ancestral home has now been um sort of entered into by this man who as we know at the end of dracula overtakes um dracula takes dracula's um you know his well i don't know what you call it life but he's the one that finally vanquishes the vampire if you're so lonely why don't you make more vampires i can't i'm too old all right i'm too old so there's all these links to him being aware of himself as being run down worn down he's not the amazing vampire that he used to be um and there's not that part of dracula like where dracula is able to in the actual book he's able to renew himself and become um young again he this dracula can't do that although i seem to remember i was never able to then how will you become a vampire it was woman no, <laughs> okay so it was woman there's still this link back to it, both texts nosferatu and dracula that everything sort of revolves about around the women in the texts and now we've had this really insightful existential chat from Dracula where, or from Orlok and all of a sudden he's turned into this monstrous, grotesque um, sort of character again. So the reason that he does or he eats the bat is number one to remind us that he is a vampire. He does what he's sort of built to do. He's a vampire and so his eating of the bat means that um, it's his way of survival. He doesn't necessarily enjoy it though. He's just had this big chat about how lonely he is and how much and how horrible it is to be him. Um, and so we kind of get the idea that really he is not a vampire by choice. And if we later on compare him to Manau, we see the contradictions and the contrasts between both of those characters. The section also plays on um, ideas of dramatic irony because obviously we know that this is a real vampire, whereas the guys he's sitting with, chatting to, um, have no idea. And so there's that post, that playfulness, that postmodern playfulness that it is, you know, um, an actor playing a vampire who is pretending to be an actor who is playing a vampire. So there's that really, okay, so we've got Willem Dafoe playing Count Orlok, who is acting as Max Shrek, and Max Shrek is actually meant to be the vampire or the Nosferatu, okay? So there's that whole playfulness here, and because of dramatic irony, we understand that, but the others don't, and so that makes their sacrifice all the more... Um, sad i guess when we get to the very end okay you also can talk about why it's set at night these guys sitting down chatting orlok obviously is awake most at night time so it follows through on some of those vampiric traditions from the other texts okay bye